The bipolar junction transistor active feedback amplifier circuit shown here is implemented using three transistors. Transistor 1 and 2 are NPN BJT transistors in the feed in the feed forward path from the input to the output as you can see and then we have a third transistor that is PNP bi bipolar junction transistor in the feedback route that is basically sampling the output voltage and then via this feedback network tries to apply an attenuated version across the 2 kilo ohm uh, resistor so let's say the beta V out uh, which beta is let's say 10% um, or let's say 5% of V out appears at the across the 2 kilo ohm and uh, this voltage effectively tries to counteract whatever V in is doing at the base so V is if V in is increasing the base then beta V out is trying to increase the emitter so that plus minus VB sort of tr uh, the circuit is trying to keep it constant so it's a negative feedback that appears at uh, in series as you can see at input so we have a voltage series feedback network okay so this is T1 this is T2 and this is T3 what I would like to do is I would like to do the quick DC bias analysis and then at the same time I would like to show a quick way to compute the feedback voltage gain basically AVF so ampl amplifier voltage gain uh, given the feedback network so that is what I would like to find let's first quickly do, do the DC bias analysis so it's the information provided is 0.8 volt is here so that is the desired voltage at that point because we have 2 kilo ohm and this 0.8 volt across 2 kilo ohm as a result uh, 0.8 divided by 2 kilo ohm give us 0.4 milliamp so the what I can say is the current of emitter for transistor 2 DC current is 0.4 milliamp okay that's good because as soon as I have that then in the hybrid model for transistor uh, the effective base resistor that we can see looking at base between base and emitter uh, is referred to as is referred to as RB2 and is equal to uh, so I'm gonna just write it R let's say base emitter 2 effectively is equal to this is uh, always roughly this formula so beta or HFE of transistor which is 200 so we, we make the assumption that the um, let me write it this way we make the assumption in this example that HFE of transistors which is basically the collect uh, the emitter current or collector current roughly so let's put it this way so collector current divided by base current is 200 which is these are very low current transistors it's a reasonable assumption so HFE times uh, VT VT is the thermal voltage which is KT over Q so VT is well known is a thermal voltage K Boltzmann constant T te junction temperature uh, in Kelvin or degree C divided by Q which is the electron charge this is roughly 26 millivolt at uh, room temp let's say room temperature so let's keep that as 26 millivolt as a reference um, and then we have divide by the IE2 so this IE2 so this is a r rough good formula so in that case I can say the current of the RBE2 is equal to uh, 200 times 26 millivolt divide by 0.4 milliamp which for this one I get roughly 13 kilo ohm. Okay, so with that in mind, what I can do is I can now do the same thing for a transistor for other transistors. So if we have a 0.4 milliamp going this way, that 0.4 milliamp has to go roughly to this, uh, not not here. We need to be careful about that. That 0.4 milliamp is also going this way roughly. 0.4 milliamp given the sizable beta that's a very good assumption that the collector and emitter has that has roughly the same current now I need to find uh, this voltage here so what I have is a voltage that is here that is causing a DC current going through 40 kilo ohm and t keeping the T3 on which requires plus minus 0.7 here and uh, if we do the analysis we can quickly find that this V is uh, 3.4 volt and as a result the voltage the DC, DC voltage drop across this across this 5.6 uh, kilo ohm resistor is 
6 volt. So um, with that then we can find uh, all that we need so we end up finding that uh, this current is 67.5 micro amp roughly and uh, obviously this current going through uh, this resistor the DC current should be because of due to KCL should be the sum or, or Kirchhoff current law should be the sum of this current and this current which means the sum of 400 uh, so the sum of 400 let me just write it here this is T2 this is 400 microamp so 400 plus 67 will give us 467.5 microamp total current that is going through this resistor uh, if we multiply just to double check 5.6 times um, times uh, four, 467 microamp give us exactly roughly on the on the order of 2.6 volts so we have from 6 volt on top that's the supply rail we have 2.6 volt drop and then that gives uh, that gets us to 3.4 volt as the DC voltage of uh, the collector of transistor T2 and uh, because of that 0.4 milliamp drop across 2k we get 0.8 volt at emitter transistor T2 is also on DC wise so we have a 0.7 volt drop so that give, gets us to DC voltage at base 1, uh, 0.8 plus 0.7 which will be 1.5 so 1.5 volt here since we have 6 volt on the supply rail uh, and we have 1.5 volt at the collector of T1 the voltage drop across the 25k is 4.5 volt and from there we can calculate that 4.5 divided by 25k gives us um, gives us 180 microamp or 0.18 milliamp so this one is 0.18 milliamp uh, this is going through the uh, so, so it's important to notice that we have um, also at the same time it's important to notice that we have 0.4 milliamp going through the so let me just write it we, we need to be very careful about about uh, the assumptions in this DC analysis so 400 microamp going this way because of 200 beta or the current gain of transistor if 400 microamp going through the emitter then 400 divide by then 400 divide by 200 so basically HFE which is 200 will become the the DC current of the base of transistor 2 which is then 2 microamp so all I'm trying to say is the current going this way DC wise is 2 microamp and uh, the current that is coming v uh, this way is 180 microamp uh, we can practically neglect the 2 microamp compared to 180 microamp so that's why I'm not considering that 2 microamp so I can make roughly the assumption that this 180 microamp goes to collector and uh, shows up here as well so I have here 180 microamp current that is coming and then from the other side roughly uh, 67.5 which is roughly 70 microamp coming and uh, I can say so I'm gonna write it here to avoid confusion 67.5 coming 67 plus 180 I can make the assumption that uh, it's roughly 250 so because of KCL at this emitter node or Kirchhoff current law the sum of incoming current should be equal to the outgoing current so 67 plus 180 sh 0.5 should be equal to this outcoming current going through the 2k it's roughly I can roughly say it's 250 microamp so 250 microamp going through this resistor which result in a 0.5 volt drop across this resistor so all I'm trying to say is DC value of so I can say DC uh, let me put it this way voltage of emitter 1 DC is approximately 0.5 volt given that uh, we want transistor T1 on we need the 0.7 volt DC across T1 0.7 plus 0.5 gives us 1.2 volt here uh, just the KVL or, or uh, Kirchhoff voltage loss the sum of uh, voltages from ground to base becomes just uh, just the sum of 0.5 and 0.7 which is 1.2 so we have 1.2 volt here and uh, 
then that helps us with finding the current through these 40k and uh, 10k. Uh, again, please note that the emitter current is 180 microamp, and since beta is pretty large, 200, that means the current through the base of transistor T1, so I base of 1 is I emitter 1 roughly. Given the large beta, I can just say roughly instead of HFE plus 1, I can just say just divide by HFE, which means roughly 180 microamp divide by 200, which is 0.9 microamp. So all I'm saying is this current is pretty small, 0.9 microamp. I can neglect it in the processing of what is going on here as long as the current through 40k and 10k is uh, sizably more than that. So let's see. Uh, if I neglect this current, I can make the assumption that roughly 40k is in series with 10k as if we have 50k from 6 volt to ground. So what I can do is I can say this current, I let's say um, 40k, so the current of 40k is equal to, <coughs> I can say 6 volt divide by 40k plus 10k. So, um, uh, or basically just the voltage division here. You can see that this current is effectively 6 volts divided by 50k, and uh, that is giving us, um, just to make sure I'm not missing something, that, that gives us, it should exactly gives us, uh, that gives us 120 microamp. It should because the reason for that is this 120 microamp going through 10k as well and uh, that result in plus minus 1.2 volt drop as we expected to get for the for this node so and this 120 microamp clearly is much much larger than 0.9 microamp so we can neglect 0.9 microamp in our calculations so um, therefore the voltage dc voltage drop across 40k is 4.8 volt and DC voltage drop across 10k here so I'm gonna just write this guy is 120 microamp so that I can avoid uh, a lot of congestion here okay and this voltage drop across this guy is 1.2 volt so we got what we wanted this is the DC bias analysis of the circuit. We found the DC value of major nodes and the current of the transistors, and as a result, we can find the, aside from RBE2 that we found, we can also find RBE, RBE1. These are the values we need for AC analysis. RBE1, same formula, HFE VT divided by IE1, so it's 200 times 26 millivolt divided by uh, the IE1. So. IE2, IE2 was 0.4, let's look at IE1. IE1 as we calculated is 180 microamp. So I'm gonna just put 0.18 milliamp. So if we calculate RBE1, um, I think it becomes roughly 29 kilo ohm. And RBE3, same thing for the PNP transistor. We are saying again HFE VT IE3 so 200 that's the current gain of transistor uh, the thermal voltage uh, is 26 millivolt so it's going to be 26 and finally the ie3 ie3 the current of emitter of transistor t3 as we saw is 67.5 microamp so i'm going to write it 67.5 microamp so if you compute this one it becomes uh, roughly 70, I think it's uh, roughly 77 kilo on that order. Uh, we can do it just very quickly, 200 times 26, times 26, divide by uh, 67 microamp. Yep, 77 kilo ohm. Okay, so we need these, we need these for AC analysis. Um, these are needed. for AC analysis, basically to find the amplifier gain. All right, so with these in mind, we are done with the DC bias analysis. We can just jump to the voltage gain AC analysis, basically. What is the AC voltage gain of this circuit? So um, I'm gonna just 
uh, draw the sketch the uh, AC equivalent for the circuit and I'm gonna change the color so that it's visible so what we have is this um, uh, we have the input voltage I'm gonna name it VS for now I don't care about its value and then we have one ki one kilo ohm the we have the one kilo ohm for the RS so RS is one kilo ohm we have the decoupling cap that separate DC va voltage from AC so we can neglect that in our AC analysis then we have the 10k so we can have the 10k resistor here then we have um, in parallel with that we have 40k uh, the supply rail from AC point of view is effectively grounded so we can say 40k is here then after that we have the uh, BJT transistor and uh, the 2k in the emitter so what I can show is something like this I can show the BJT transistor and then I have let me put it this way I have the 2k I am in feedback network now because that that 2k is part of the feedback network and PNP and 40k so uh, instead of the transistor I'm gonna show uh, what is the the hybrid uh, equivalent of that feedback network so the way we model the feedback network we say there is this um, let's say beta V out in the feedback system that goes to ground and on the other side uh, there is no impact from collector side to emitter assuming that the RO of transistor is pretty, pretty large so in this assumption we make the, uh, in this analysis we make the assumption that RO from pr our perspective is infinite or on the order of mega ohm so we don't care about uh, we, we have no impact from uh, collector back to back to emitter so in general in the hybrid model we have this thing which here is zero because there is nothing coming from a collector side uh, toward the emitter side but what we have is the 40k this 40k and uh, this whole thing is grounded on this side and from the other side it's connected it's connected to the output voltage so I'm gonna keep it here now uh, look at the collector of transistor T1 we have 25k and 25k is connected to supply which AC wise is grounded so we have we have like this so we have collector and then collector going to a resistor which is the value of 25k and it's AC grounded and then we have also connection that got directly goes to the emitter of uh, the base of transistor T2 so we have this connection so we have this connection that goes to the base of transistor T2 and uh, you can see that uh, we have a bypass gap so this cap here in the frequency range that matters to this uh, amplifier it will bypass the 2k as if there is no as if this point or this node is uh, AC virtual ground so we have AC virtual ground at the emitter okay so we have emitter of transistor this is T1 this is T2 and it's grounded by the bypass cap and then we can see at the at the collector of transistor T2 we have uh, the 5.6 kilo ohm here that is that is uh, effectively connected to a virtual ground because 6 volt is DC AC wise is grounded so what I'm gonna show is something like this 5.6 Okay, and then this is a decoupling cap that in the AC frequency range of interest for this amplifier similar to this one these two are decoupling caps and they they are shorted AC wise in the range of frequency that matters to this amplifier so we can just have 3 kilo ohm here okay so this and then we have the connection of course from the output so from the output you can say we have the connection back to the feedback network so my feedback network here is this network so this is the equivalent to port for the feedback so to find beta what I need to do is I need to cut this wire and uh, apply the voltage and measure beta so that's the property of the hybrid model this is the hybrid two port model for the feedback 
hybrid two port standard model that we use for uh, voltage so remember we are picking out output voltage and we are applying uh, so here we have V in and uh, V in AC okay and uh, here we have uh, the result of the feedback so it is in series with V in so uh, that's a voltage series feedback okay so in this scenario what do we what we need to find to find the beta of the feedback is open this node as I did so I just cut the wire here and then measure what voltage we see because we opened it no current going through this guy and therefore what we measure at VF is exactly beta V out so effectively what I'm doing is I am measuring uh, uh, VF when V out is applied when V out is applied here when I cut the current of port 1 this port 0 by cutting the wire so that is what I'm doing that will give me the beta of the feedback network that I'm interested in okay so it, what what is the meaning of that it means go back to the feedback network so uh, my feedback network is I'm gonna copy paste it so that it's easy to it's easier to see uh, let, let's see if I can show it or maybe I can just try it because it takes more time so my feedback network is from V out so what what is this uh, block diagram uh, from V out I have a 40k and then I have this transistor and then I have the 2k so the 2 kilo ohm. that is my feedback network so if I want to find and this wire is cut so this wire is connected to the emitter of the first transistor in the system but I'm cutting it to as 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 the, for the reason I described I'm cutting it therefore there is no connection there so it's open and I need to find uh, when V out V out is applied it result in, in it result in a current injected AC wise AC current and I want to find this current uh, which result as sort of a, a, this voltage VF what is this VF so it's easy to find uh, the base the base emitter the base emitter resistor as we computed here for transistor T3 is now useful seven, 70, 77 kilo but that is the resistor we see at the if we look into the base if we are looking from the emitter side that resistor is 77 kilo ohm divided by 200 because we are porting it from base to emitter where the current is 200 times larger so uh, if we do that this becomes roughly 380 ohm so this 380 ohm is what is observed when we look into transistor from emitter side which is negligible compared to 40k obviously it's less than hundredth of the 40k so what I can do is when I want to compute this I emitter AC I can neglect the 380 or the impact of basically RBE3 ported to emitter so I can say IE is roughly V out divided by 40k great now I can say because beta or HFE of transistor is very large 200 so collector current AC for this transistor T3 is the same as emitter roughly so tr usually we say collector current is HFE so the beta of transistor I'm not using beta because it causes confusion with the beta of the feedback network HFE over 1 plus HFE times I emitter but since HFE is large 200 I can say uh, because of HFE of 200 IC is so this is equal IC is roughly IE so therefore this is IC as well okay and then I can find V, v feedback here easy because now I have IC so I can say V feedback is therefore equal to 2k times IC which is then uh, 2k or 2 kilo ohm times V out divided by 40k 
So V out divide by 40k. Great, I found what I wanted because I exactly found V feedback over V out is equal to uh, 2k over 40k, which is 1 over 20. So that is my beta. I exactly found this one. So I found it is equal to uh, V out. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just writing it again here 2k divided by 40k. So 2k divided by 40k times V out. Uh, sorry, that's it. So it's 1 over 20. So I found my beta for the feedback network. That's great. And I already have the 40k as the resistor seen on this side from, uh, on the, from the second uh, port of this two port. And I have 2k that is from the other side. So when I remove feedback, what happens? Meaning that when I cut this wire, uh, if I do that, then this becomes zero because V out is zero because feedback network is disconnected and we only have this guy zero shorted and 2K connected to ground. So all I'm trying to say is when feedback is not there, it's as if we just cut this wire. So let me uh, show it with different color. It's as if we just cut this wire. Uh, so 2K should be there for the open loop analysis. All right, so um, now to do the open loop analysis, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I am going to do it this way. So for open loop analysis, I am doing it this way. So here is my connection. Here is my connection that is, that is cut from the output. So let me show it this way. I, I, I intentionally cutting uh, the connection, but then this 2K resistor should be there because cutting result this guy to, uh, to become shorted. So 2K should be there in my open loop analysis. So open loop circuit analysis is, uh, and, and of course uh, the 40K impact should be there as well. So uh, we need to be careful about that. Um, so what I need to do is uh, now, something is, is like this. I need to just uh, say, let's find V in. So to find V in, I can say, maybe I use, um, maybe I use, I'm just thinking about the color because too many colors is not good, but okay. So maybe I need to find, uh, maybe I use the black color. V in is equal to, now we have, uh, series of uh, parallel of 2k 10k and 40k if I'm if I'm trying to find a Thevenin equivalent for this part let's do that first so if I find a Thevenin equivalent of that part what I see is this network and I'm looking from this side so what I see is uh, 40k parallel with uh, 10k give me uh, on the order of I think uh, let me make sure I'm not missing something so just to make sure I'm not missing something, um, 40, I'm, I'm just calculating, divide by 50, give me 8K. So what I see for the circuit is something like this. I see, I see VS, I see RS, 1K, and I see and I see 8K. And then that is the Thevenin equivalent. So, if, uh, I mean, that is, the w that is what I see here. If I want to find the Thevenin equivalent, it's uh, 8 over 9. So it's going to be uh, something like this. This is equivalent to V Thevenin and R Thevenin. So V Thevenin is uh, then eight over nine because it is the voltage across this guy uh, f coming from Vs. So eight over nine times Vs. And R Thevenin is when we short this guy, what sort of an impedance we see this way, which is eight K parallel with one K. So if we do that, then uh, it's gonna be eight divided by nine is roughly 0.9. So R Thevenin is 
I'm going to write it this way. R thevenin is 8k parallel with 1k is roughly 0.9 kilo ohm. Okay, why did I do this? Because then I can connect the circuit to the base of the transistor T1 to go to t 2 kilo ohm here, to go to 2 kilo ohm here, and the rest. So the rest is as the rest is as we see here. So the rest is as we see here. Okay, so um, now I can find the current of base of transistor 1, and therefore I can find the current of collector of transistor 1. This is T1. So what I can say is IC1 is HFE, which is 200, times IB1, but then is 200 times IB1, which is V Thevenin, uh, 8 over 9, and then let's keep it as, uh, for now, let's keep it as, uh, I'm going to keep this as it is, and I am interested in finding this voltage first. So let's do that first. Uh, what I have is, uh, for that voltage, since I have 0.9k, since I have 0.9k here for this resistor, and since this resistor, so if you look at this resistor, it's pretty large. That is uh, the RBE of transistor T11. So let's say RB1, just uh, abbreviation, plus uh, you get HFE plus 1 which is just HFE roughly, so R, let's say R, uh, let's say here, so it is R, let's say in, is equal to HFE plus 1 times 2K, which roughly gives us uh, 429K. So 429 kilo ohm. It's pretty large. All I'm trying to say is, given that the resistor observed like this is such a large resistor compared to R Thevenin, I can just uh, make the assumption that uh, the VT8 over 9 VS is appearing at input as well. So in this circuit, I can just safely say, um, continuing this calculation, is HFE 200, so let me keep it 200, and times IB1, which is, as I said, this voltage is practically the same as this voltage. So, therefore, what I get is 8 over 9 Vs divided by the R in, which is 429 kilo ohm. Okay, so this is IC1, this current which, uh, if you go back to the circuit, is this current to the complete AC model. Now, this current, we need to find IC2. That matters to me. So we found IC1, but I need to find IC2 so that I can get to V out. So what is IC2? Well, I can do the same thing. I can say IC2 is, again, HFE times, so, HFE or current gain of transistor number 2 times IB2. But remember, IB2 is this current. So be very uh, careful about the direction of the current. So IC1 is this way, but IB2 is this way. So when we want to get from IC1 to IB2, we need to uh, do a change of direction, which means a negation. So I have to put it this way. HFE is 200. IB2, I can do a... Um, so f as you remember, it's now useful. RBE2 here. So RBE2 was computed 13 kilo ohm. So that 13 kilo ohm is what is observed here. 13 kilo ohm. So therefore, to find IB2, I need to do a voltage uh, current division between uh, 25k and 13k. Basically, how much of this IC1 is flowing is is flowing through 13k 
instead of going to 25k well it, that's a simple uh, current division between two parallel resistors so what I can do is then I can say it's just uh, don't forget about the negative sign and it's gonna be 25k divided by 25k kilo ohm plus 13 kilo ohm just a simple current division between two resistors and the negative sign as I just explained okay so what do we get it becomes negative 200 and 25 over so negative 200 times 25 over uh, 38 so keep that uh, and of course we forgot that to say this is times IC2 so keep this let's refer to the first one we found here as equation 1 let's refer to this second one as equation 2 and uh, we got to IC2 now how can we find V out well that's e easy now because IC2 is this current and we just need to consider the parallel of these resistors so we have uh, 5.6 we have 3k and we have 40k so IC2 with this direction will cause a voltage drop like this which is counter the assumption for V out so again we need another negative sign there so I can say V out is equal to minus IC2 times uh, the three resistors in parallel 5.6k in parallel with 3k in parallel with 40k of 40k meaning uh, this resistor which which is in circuit this resistor here so what we can compute out of this if you can compute this thing it becomes one point roughly 86 so we get V out is roughly minus 1.86 K so kilo ohm times IC2 so this is the third equation so number three okay now we have everything we wanted so I can use the combination of one two and three to say okay V out is equal to minus 1.86 K times instead of IC2 I'm gonna substitute using what I got from equation from equation 2 that says IC2 is this uh, sorry this one is IC1 here so my bad this one is IC1 okay so it becomes uh, minus 186 times minus 200 25 over 38 times IC1 then IC1 I can substitute IC1 uh, using uh, equation 1 uh, which says IC1 is equal to this thing times VS so I can do uh, 200 times uh, and remember uh, VN is just 8 over 9 VS that's what we found for the circuit so let's keep it as so I'm gonna just write here is this V in when I say V in I refer to I refer to this node so V in at the base of transistor T1 that matters to feedback network so let's keep it as V in your V base V base of transistor so V in equal to V base of transistor 1 so V base of transistor 1 divided by 429 kilo ohm. okay so what did we find here uh, we found that V out is approximately when we multiply everything that you see here we get uh, 1.6 times 200 times 25 divided by 38 uh, times 200 divide by 429 which gives us 114 roughly 114 uh, and then minus minus becomes plus uh, 
VB1. So what is the meaning of this? AV, I'm going to put it this way. AV open loop, so uh, amplifier voltage gain open loop, which is V out over V base 1, is equal to 114 volt over volt. So that's very interesting. Uh, the feedback network is like this, as we talked about. So we have the we have the base of transistor T1, V in, which is not Vs, uh, is at V base of transistor 1. Then we have our feedback, so Vf. So let's put it this way. Then we have the Vf to ground. And then the amplifier here computes the delta and then and then via AV open loop goes to the output V out and then this goes back and uh, via beta uh, becomes V VF. So if we want to find amplifier voltage gain closed loop now feedback basically feedback loop then I have to just say AV open loop plus so that's the open loop gain 1 plus loop gain which is beta times AV out so AV AV open loop so that gives me 114 divide by 1 plus 114 divide by um, 20, 1 over let me put it this way avoid confusion beta is 1 over 20 and AV out is 114 and if you compute this it will just give you uh, so 114 divided by 20 is 5.7 so it's roughly 114 divided by 6.7 which is um, divided by 6.7 which is 17 roughly so the closed loop voltage gain, AC voltage gain of this amplifier is 17. Just bear in mind that if uh, beta times AV out is much, much larger than 1, which is not the case here. You saw this value here is 5.7. is not much, much larger than 1. It's just larger than 1, so we cannot neglect 1. But if in an example, the loop gain, this is loop gain. If loop gain beta times AV as not is much larger than one we can neglect one and therefore it becomes AV over beta AV and then AV cancel out and become 1 over beta so effectively if beta is 1 over 20 which is the case here then it becomes 1 over 1 over 20 which is 20 so from the get-go we could have said let's make the assumption that uh, the loop gain is much larger than one so therefore the f uh, the feedback gain is just 1 over beta so it's just basically 20 roughly you can see it deviates from the actual number but as a starting point ballpark or, or sort of um, I would say big picture wise is a good initial estimate so if you don't if somebody wants to just quickly have an idea assuming AV open loop is pretty large uh, 114 is not bad is is reasonably large but the problem here is beta times AV is not large enough to but it's a good assumption it's a reasonable good initial assumption while it's deviating from the actual number 17 okay so with that said uh, we found this and finally if we want to find uh, the uh, let's say uh, V out over VS we just need to do one further step we say it's V out over VB1 times VB1 over VS uh, obviously we can cancel out VB1, VB1, go back to this. But the good thing is if we use this then we have we have this guy as 17 and this guy is what we calculated before is 8 over 9. It is this number, see? It's, it's this number, 8 over 9. So uh, therefore uh, final final calculation V out over Vs for the feedback system is 17 times 8 over 9 which is roughly 17 times 8 divided by 9 is 15.11 
So that is the final AC gain. Okay, I hope that this extensive uh, DC BIOS and AC analysis for a uh, three transistor two stage uh, BJT active feedback amplifier is helpful and useful.